AJ Jones. Yes, sir. How the heck are you? I'm so good. I like that I'm in a short sleeve shirt because it's roasting down here and you're in a cable knit sweater. It, it is not roasting down here. It is, uh, I think I dressed in the sweater for being upstairs where the air conditioning is booming at like Arctic levels. Well, that's just because we got it back. We So last week you probably saw a post on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever, that we just said, hey, we're taking a week off. It was a, a rough week for a number of reasons. Our, our nation was on fire. But for us, particularly, it, we actually tried to take vacation two weeks ago. Yes. Two weeks ago, we went camping, which is always fun. Except uh, we discovered this thing that when we're camping, there's no point in sending the kids to bed at their normal hour because... They don't go to sleep. It's well, too yeah, bright. it's too bright. It's so too bright. we it's let them stay high. up it's till too, yeah. like 9, 9.30, at which point we realized we haven't had any time to connect. No. So we usually step to like midnight, 12.30. Yeah. And then we forget that the sun gets up at like 5.30 <laughs> and we're awake. And so a little bit tired from that. And then on our last night, it was easily... The most epic storm ever. Most impressive thunderstorm I have ever been in. Yes. And we're in a tent. And we're in a tent. Thunder, lightning, like colossal peals of thunder. Yeah. And I didn't realize we shouldn't be in a tent when there's a lightning storm. Yeah. But I realized this. We're surrounded by trees. We're going to be fine. I mean, But the kids all ended up in our cots because it was so loud and they were so scared. And it was pretty scary. Like, it was really loud. And it poured torrentially for two hours, so it didn't pass. Yeah. All that saying, by the end of th- two weeks ago, we, I mean, we could barely keep our eyes open. Yeah. Only to come home and find, well, when we left, our air conditioning in the downstairs was broken. Now, if you're not from America, let me just say this. If you're in Britain, you don't need air conditioning, right? Because it rarely gets warm enough. And if it does, you just open the windows. And if it's cold, you use your gas central heating which warms one part of your wall. <laughs> but here in the summer, where often it's like 100% humidity. Oh, and it can get epically hot. Really, really hot. You need air conditioning. And uh, so our downstairs unit broke. We went camping, so didn't really care. It got fixed while we were away. No, it got fixed the day we got back. Yes. And then the next day we woke up to find that our upstairs unit had, had died. Had broken, yeah. And it took six days to get somebody out. Because that weekend, I think, was the the benchmark the opening of summer or something like that. Every air conditioning engineer was overwhelmed. Yes. So for six days, our upstairs was completely un- uninhabitable. Yeah, it was 97 degrees upstairs Which is like one of the days. 35, yeah. 36 in Celsius. Oh, it's so hot. It, I mean, it was just stifling. So now we've got air conditioning fixed, almost. Our upstairs unit is still not fixed yet. <laughs> it's not yet, but by next week it will be. And right now... But downstairs is nice and nice and cool. So yeah. I... And You're generally compensating. Speaking, well, by... I like things being cold and you like things being hot. Yes. All the children are saying, it's so cold in here. And Alan's like, this is great. I'm like, shut it. <laughs> Which, to explain, unless you think I'm a, you know, horribly aggressive father it was tia's birthday yesterday yes and for her birthday she decided that she wanted daddy to speak in a scottish accent but i've forgotten how to speak in a scottish accent even though right now i'm probably still have a scottish accent if you're an american if you're used to hearing an american accent mine does not sound like an american accent if you're listening to this and you're in scotland i know i don't have a scottish accent anymore I have this weird hybrid american thing anyway i couldn't remember how to speak scottish so all I did was quote Mike Myers from So I Married an Axe Murderer <laughs> and would just say, shut it. And you call me time. Bird a lot. All right, Bird. Bird. Yeah, so that's where <laughs> that came from. So anyway, that's a quick recap on our week. We hope your two weeks have been amazing. I hope that you are doing well. We are journeying through and we're at our last feeling. Yep, we have finally made it to Glad. The one that everybody wishes that was the only feeling available. <laughs> yeah. As soon as we, like, whenever we teach this and put it up on the screen, everyone's like, why is there only one good one? Today we're talking about the one good one. Yeah. I've got some fear to use my feelings. I've got some fear about talking about gladness. Why? Uh, my fear is everyone's been waiting for the good one. And I fear that they're n- not going to be happy when they hear it's not as good as they might think it But I think be. we've already established that they're all good. That they all have a purpose and they all have a gift. So hopefully by now you've listened to 
the previous seven feelings and you realize they're all good. And so maybe can that alleviate some of your fear? Yeah, but still, like, let's do a quick survey. Hey, baby, today yeah. is Saturday. Would you like to feel sad all day or would you like to feel <laughs> glad all day? They're both good. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, so my point is, like, yeah, we're yeah. hardwired to want, like, good things. Yeah, yeah. And the more and more we, st- as soon as we start talking about glad, there's going to be temptation to go, that's glad? But bear with us because glad is beautiful and glad is great. Okay. So I probably already hinted at this in my little fear preamble, but being glad is not about being happy. Right. But I think you you probably already know this, but the word happiness actually comes from the word happenstance. Mm-hmm. And so it has a lot to do with our circumstances, uh, you know, more than our reality. Right. So happiness is about how things are going for us. Yes. The circumstances around us dictating the level of okay that we feel. Yes. That's not glad. Yes. Gladness is not about circumstance. <laughs> Gladness is basically about two things. Gladness is about desiring deeply and being willing to endure pain for that desire to come to fruition. Ooh, that doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> exactly. Being able to endure pain. Uh, a bunch of you just were like, and we're done. Peace out, folks. I, I gotta like, go. I don't need this on my Monday. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. I thought that was my fear. was going to be epic. Okay. So that's my fear right there. It's basically about two things. It's yeah. about desiring really, really deeply. Yes. And being willing to endure pain okay. to see that desire be met. Okay. But it gets worse than that. Oh, no. Yeah, because your gladness isn't dependent on that desire being met. Okay. So you could go through all that pain, still not have your desire be met, and still have gladness. <gasps> right. So this is why, like, welcome to the club. We've got jackets. It's better than you think it is, but it's worse than you thought it was. It, uh, sorry, say that again. Well, people it's are tuning in for glad, is. going like, oh, yeah. praise God, like we've endured the other seven. Finally, we get to the eighth one. And then they just hear, it's like, it's about keeping your heart open for desire and enduring pain. And even if you don't get it, that's still gladness. This is what I signed up for. So it's like way worse. But as we keep talking, you'll realize, oh, it's so much better than you think it is. So All right, let's stay keep with then. us. Yep, yep. So, babe, explain how gladness still shows up, even if we don't get what we're desiring. Right. Well, the gladness is all about actually having a heart that is full enough to risk desire. Okay. And the process of enduring pain and reaching for that thing that you desire uh, is about, you can only do that if you live fully. And so the gladness comes from actually purposing in your heart that I am going to live fully. Like, I think, I, I remember listening to Graham Cook once, and he just said, it doesn't matter how many times I'm stabbed in the back, how many times I'm rejected, how many times I'm isolated, how many times I'm, you know, lied about. I refuse to step back from community. I refuse to step back from living because then I go in a prison. Right. And that's that's what we're talking about. Like, uh, circumstances would say nobody has to treat me poorly. I get everything that I want. I can sit my ties by the beach. I can eat, you know, ice cream all day and never put on weight, and then I will be glad, aka happy. And it's it's not that now. To be sure, will you feel glad if you have a big desire, you endure pain, and you get that desire for sure? But the amazing thing about gladness is gladness will show up even if you love fully, live fully, and don't get what you are actually desiring for there will still be gladness in the pursuit of that thing. Yeah. It's one of those crazy things about life that's true, that sounds horrible on paper, but is what makes living full-heartedly, that sounded quite Scottish, living full-heartedly, a joy. Yeah. As horrible as it may seem, gladness is not about outcomes. It's about living fully. Yeah. Chip talks about that a lot in his chapter on gladness. Gladness comes to those who know and persistently pursue their heart's desires. To find gladness, we need to be vulnerable to our heart's intentions and pursue desires that we know in our hearts to be true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, or excellent. Knowing our heart's intentions and desires requires feeling fully. For every feeling identifies our needs and illuminates our desires. Gladness, then, is a result of our willingness to feel the other seven feelings. So basically, if gladness is not about outcomes, but about living fully, yeah, then we're actually never going to get there to that fully living without feeling all seven feelings. Oh, the other seven feelings in order yeah. to feel gladness. You're yeah. right. Which is why now, for the second time, people are like, and we're done. Don't. Stay stay, <laughs> stay. with us. Stay. I, I promise. <laughs> okay. So let's say I'm prepared to feel all my other seven feelings. Yes. And 
I am going to now, I'm going to feel glad too. Yep. What is the gift of glad? Right. So remember, every week we've been talking about if you're willing to feel a feeling, there's a gift in the feeling. Yeah. The gift of glad yes. is joy with sadness. Well, that sounds awful. <laughs> you're like, can I have just the joy and hold the side <laughs> yeah. of sadness, please? You know, like you're ordering. Yeah. Can you hold the mustard? Yeah. Yeah. Hold the sadness. Yeah. Now ask me, why does sadness have to show up? So why does sadness have to show up? Well, gladness can only appear in our lives if we're willing to accept life on life's terms. Yes. That's another chipism, right? So right. chip talks about like living life on life's terms, which, by the way, is the only way. And what, what I think he means by that, or when I think about living life on life's terms, I'm talking about like life is replete with a bunch of things, like mystery. Like that, that's honestly what we're walking through as a nation, as we're walking through as a church. Like in our senior team meetings this week, we've been talking about like in our church, Jeff Dollar, our senior pastor, has spent the last six months talking about faith. And then the coronavirus starts up and we're shut down. And so, like, what is our response as the church to care for people, but also move in faith? And, you know, it's mystery. Yes. It's filled with tragedy. It's filled with heartache, but it's also filled with reunion and glory and potential and goodness and sadness and birth and death and memories. And you only get memories when something is lost. You you know, it's just this collage of stuff. And if you're going to live life on life's terms, you have to accept that all of those are coming your way. Yes. Yeah. And I think sometimes, I mean, I think I've definitely had this conversation with several sort of newer believers where they're like, well, I don't understand. I gave my life to the Lord and I still have things to deal with. And then there's still sad things and there's still hard things. And and I was was like, we're we're never promised that it's going to be any different than that. It's just that you're going through it with somebody else hand in hand, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, life is full and it's full of lots of stuff that we probably don't want. Uh, and it's full of lots of stuff that we do want, but still, babe, you haven't actually told me why sadness accompanies joy and gladness. Okay. So let me give you a really practical example. Okay. Something you do every single morning. Okay. You pick up your phone. Yes. You open up that dumb app with a dinosaur on it. What's it called? Yes. Uh, okay. Time hop. Now, did you see her face? If you watched the video, she just, she doesn't know where I'm going because she hasn't seen the notes for this week. I talk about time hop. What do you feel when you look through your photos in time hop? Oh, so much joy. And yeah. and some sadness, yeah. Right. So you scroll through Time Hop. For those of you who don't know what Time Hop is, it's an app that periodically shows you, hey, four years ago on this day, you posted this picture to Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So you scroll through Time Hop and you might see a picture of like the kids. Yeah, I mean I mostly just post pictures of the kids or food. Okay. <laughs> But also like the stuff you've posted to Instagram. So yeah. like dinner with friends. So yeah. like you might go, Oh, I remember uh-huh. having dinner with that person. Yeah. And the gladness of remembering dinner and then the sadness that I'm not in relationship with anymore because they passed away. Yeah. Or Or they live really far away. Or they live really far away. Or most often you look at the kids and there's joy at the the kids, sadness they're no longer that age. Yes. Right? It's not that you don't want them to be who they are today, but you you look at it and you go, oh, I remember when MJ was three and he said, we go beach. I want to go beach. What is it that you want to do? Go beach. You want to go to the beach? Yeah, go beach. Can I tell you something? Yeah. We live in Nashville. There's no beach here. Ankle beach. Ankle beach. You get dressed and you go beach. You want to get dressed and go to the beach? Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it's so adorable. It's not that you're wishing that you didn't have your seven-year-old version of that, but you're longing for a day gone by that you can no longer have back. And there's, oh, I'm getting teared up. There's gladness about that, but there's also sadness that that's gone. Yeah, that makes complete sense. And so that that, that repleteness of the joy with sadness is what gladness is all about. Excuse me, for whatever reason, I'm feeling really glad and it's making my eyes water. I think I'm allergic to gladness. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what it is. We we have got friends who uh, have either gone through empty nester phase or are in empty nester phase, and they've got the joy that their kids made it through their teenage years without them killing them, right? And joy that they've got into university or joy <laughs> yeah. that they're getting married and moving out. Yeah. But sadness that that era of life that they're no longer living in their home is anymore. Yeah. There's gladness. Yay! And there's sadness as yeah. well. Think about graduation. We just did graduation for our SOSL or I, I 
personalizing. Like I remember graduating from university, this gladness. I have accomplished something like four years of hard work. Like, ah. And then the sadness of leaving all of my friends and everything yeah. that's familiar behind and not knowing what's going in, but the gladness of what's coming. Yeah. Think about moving here. Like yeah. the gladness of a new adventure of moving to America, which was one of both of our heart's desires. Yeah. But the sadness of leaving behind our family and friends and church and, the you know, yeah. So that's what we're talking about, life on life's terms. Did we feel glad boarding that plane in Toronto Pearson to land here? Absolutely. And what was in there? Joy about what was set before us, but sadness about what we're leaving behind. Yes. So that's why sadness always shows up. Anytime you find joy, you're going to find sadness nestled in around them. And again, because sadness is not bad, that shouldn't surprise us. Right. But the temptation to only have joy without sadness is what we're going to talk about later when we come to the impairment. Okay. I think that makes sense, babe. I think like when you're thinking about as Christians, yeah. our biggest source of joy mm -hmm. is that we have peace with God. Right. But we also recognize that that peace came at the cost of Jesus' life. Right. So there's joy with sadness. Yeah, and you get acutely aware. Like I don't think it was until the Passion of the Christ when you're watching Ugh. the loss of Jesus' life and what he went through yes. that do you get in touch with the sadness. Like I, I went through years of communion in the little brethren assembly I grew up in going, why is everybody so miserable? And they, they're miserable because they're proclaiming Jesus' death until he comes. Like the, there's that weekly reminder, at least the way we did it growing up, weekly reminder around the communion table of like, ah, oh, what I have, I got for free, but it cost you everything. Yeah. Joy with sadness. Yeah. I mean, it, it talks about, you know, for jo the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Yes. So that is that is why sadness shows up. <laughs> that yep. makes sense? It totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, babe, if we don't want to pay the price right. of, you know, joy with sadness, we don't want to pay the sadness part. So we're just like, nope, I'm going to I'm going to skip it. I'm not going to feel this. What's the impairment? The impairment of gladness is this really clunky phrase that Chip uses called sensual pleasure without heart. Sensual pleasure without heart. It's trying to manufacture the feeling of glad without paying the price of feeling the other feelings. Wow. Okay. Basically, what we would call in in our previous teachings, you know, on the orphan spirit and stuff like that, counterfeit affections. So the human form is amazing at managing to twist anything into idolatry. So it's basically trying to get away from the feelings with stimulus that feels good. Yes. And that could be anything, shopping, alcohol, right. sex, pornography, Hard work, hyper religious activity, video games, books, video games, books, yeah, hiking, anything. running, however, however you anything. Hide and try and produce like a counterfeit feeling better. How do you be present without your heart and feel good? Right, it's the birthplace of addiction. It's like yeah. it is sensuality without heart. It's like I want to, as Chip says, live fully without having to pay the price of living fully. Right. I'm acutely aware, for example, when I get a new video game that's brand new, that's unexplored territory, there is something beautiful about getting lost, like stepping away from the responsibilities of my life, the craziness of the world. And like right now, I'm trying to crossbreed flowers in Animal Crossing. I'm yes, trying you are. to build, I'm trying to breed a blue rose. All right. Yep. So right now, you know, the, it feeds so much of me, my personality. Like, I, oh, I get to do research and I get to optimize and then I get to build and, oh, it takes time. But and you have to wait, set there's this up before this. Because before I can this. time travel. <laughs> wait, I can get other people in. And, you know, I've got a goal that's going to be achievable and I know I can do. And I'm aware that when I'm doing that, oh, it just lets me escape from all of my responsibilities. And, and there is a certain goodness of that. That's why we have hobbies. I'm also aware, oh, I could live in there and refuse to live out here. And yes. that's when I've stepped over in a danger zone. Yeah. And like I said, as humans, we're really, really good at making idols out of anything. Yeah. So, and, and it's not just the bad stuff. Anything can become bad. Yes. Yeah. Like our cell phones. Yeah. I realize I've got trigger finger, you know, muscle memory for, do I have an email? Do I have an email? I'm looking for stimulus. And there's a danger that we settle for that instead of wanting to live fully from the heart. Anything you want to talk about, like, you know, as we're walking in the light, I've talked a little bit about video games. I mean, I could just bring up my I, Amazon purchase history could, here. Anything I, you want to talk about? I could, I could also, uh -huh. uh, I could relate to the video game thing. I haven't gotten quite as much into that one as when we got Zelda. Yeah. I, I totally hid in Zelda uh, for months, like just like 
oh, I can disconnect and hide and not feel anything and yeah. just be in this place and whatever. Um, but I've I've recently started reading again fiction, and so uh, I've I've realized you're playing the video game like when when we're having those like super stressful days or whatever it's like oh we both sort of hit our max and go all right you're gonna play a video game and i'm gonna read or but also yeah. like when we're on vacation yeah. that's where we would like veer to yes i think what i'm encouraging people to hear is like you could hear this and think okay so anything i do like there's a thin line between self-care and and falling into you know idolatry and I think part of the feelings work gives you more awareness of what your heart's doing. Yeah. I think previously I wouldn't have had the awareness to know, you know, what what is happening. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. I I think, like, when I think back to the Zelda season, for example. Yeah. Oh, the sweet Zelda season. The sweet when Zelda When I ran season. through the fields in Hyrule and, yeah, go on. So, I mean, for me, I'd never been into a video game before. Ever. In fact, you and despised them. I did. And... And so for me, there was a lot of paying attention because I, I didn't even know how to make the buttons do different things and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I did know I was using it as an escape. Like I literally was like, I'm going to go play Zelda for an hour. I cannot think about anything else while playing Zelda because I have to focus on the buttons. And I remember making an intentional choice yeah. that saying I'm going to set aside, you know, this time where I'm going to go play, you know, because I can't. Yes. Because I can escape. Yep. And I think it's okay to escape, but I, I I mean I recognized what I was doing. Right. But then it can become like, oh, actually it's so much easier to escape than to feel. And I think that's when it becomes Danger zone. Danger zone. Like not I'm choosing to do something that is like kind to a, my heart. Kind to my heart and I get to disconnect for a bit or whatever. I think that's fine. It's more when it's now become the only way that we're coping with life mm -hmm. is I will escape to this video game or I will escape to these books or I will escape to Netflix or I'll escape to, you know, and right. in, in order to not feel. And it's easy to vilify, like, especially in our culture, Christian culture I'm talking about, it's easy to vilify the bad things. Yeah. All right. So we've got like, we, and depending on your church background, depending on what you've been brought up in, like the, we have a list of what's really bad. The danger is when what we're using for sensual pleasure without heart is not only acceptable but rewarded yes so evangelism witnessing hyper-religious activity uh you know going through your your prayer list like anything that we're doing to take control of our powerlessness yeah is a, an attempt to run life and and a lot you're not going to reach gladness till you realize how little control you have over what goes on in life yeah that kind of makes me think about that season. And we've talked about it before. I've taught about it, but the whole Martha Plexi thing. Yeah, go talk about your Martha Plexi um, addiction. My Martha, you know, I I had a, a long season, particularly at the beginning of the renewal, uh, where because I was way more of a human Wait, doing. Ex explain the renewal because you got people. I, I forget that it was 1994 when it happened. And you got people listening to this podcast who weren't even born then. Right. So paint the picture of what renewal looked like. So in 1994... Uh, the Holy Spirit showed up in a very powerful way uh, in the church in Toronto where I went. And uh, we started seeing amazing things, you know, yeah. uh, miracles, miracles and marriages, uh, healings, all kinds of but you're having, stuff. But you're having church meetings every single night. Every single night. and There's people, no discussion about what you and your friend group are doing. Right. Everyone's and, at church. And at this time, there's no, uh, there's no real internet. If it were to happen now, it would be a totally different mm -hmm. scenario. Uh, but people were coming from literally all over the world to this little church at the end of the runway. And, uh, you know, within the first couple of years, I, it was like five or six million people that had come uh, to just see what God was doing and to experience the Lord. And and it was amazing. But in the, in the midst of that, uh, there was a tremendous opportunity for those of us that were like me, who were a bit more, I was more of a human doing than a human being. You were a Martha Plactic. I was a Martha Plactic. And uh, I earned affirmation by serving. 
Uh, I didn't actually know how to receive affirmation from the father at all. And uh, I really didn't want to deal with any of the big stuff in my heart. So my plan was stay as busy as you can right. all day long, and then you'll fall into bed exhausted and you won't have to think or deal with any of your emotions. Get or up the next day. be present with your heart. Right. And do the exact same thing again. And so uh, there was so much opportunity to do great spiritual things, but I recognized that that was one of the ways that I was actually hiding from my own emotions. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, you know, in, in his kindness after about, I think it was like eight or nine months. Uh, he, he called me on it. Just, I remember being at this big meeting and being in worship and having my, my hands in the air, like just, you know, worshiping like, and the Lord said to me, I, I want you to put your hands down. And the short version is he basically said, I don't want you to raise your hands above your heart until you understand that I want your heart and not your hands. Mm. And so that started a, a pretty difficult season for me for about two and a half years where I was um, trying to learn to not run. And, uh, yeah. you know, it was tricky because that was my that was how I've always coped. Get busy. Right. Busyness. Get busy. Most acceptable drug today. Yeah. And it looks good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your description is beautiful about the full spectrum of how we as humans can experience sensuality without heart. You know, we arrange our lives with busyness, with entertainment, with uh, things that give us purpose without having to be present with our own hearts. Yeah. And that's that's the impairment of of gladness. And the tragedy is you miss out on gladness. You get the high from achieving things, but you're left with an emptiness after it happens. Yeah. Of course, gladness is something that the Lord loves to give us. Yeah. I mean, your relationship with the Lord, the byproduct of that is gladness. Yeah. Listen to this. This is from Psalm four, verses seven and eight. It says, You've put gladness in my heart more than when there are grain and new wine abound. In peace I lie down. And sleep for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. I love that, babe. You have put gladness in my heart. God puts gladness in your heart. More than when there's grain and new wine. So he's talking about like it's not dependent on happenstance. It's not dependent on a season of abundance. No, I, I, you know, we've we've talked about this a lot and we've joked about this, but there have been seasons of our marriage when we have had no money, less than no money, like crippled in debt, no money. No seeming way out. Yes. And at the same time, feeling like the wealthiest people in the world. Like, yeah. I remember going to bed one night thinking, Lord, I have, I have like negative net worth. And I feel like the wealthiest person in the world. Yeah. Because of the gladness that the Lord's, you know, put in our hearts. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah. I was laughing. I was, I was, I was looking through our notes about what we're going to share today. And I realized, uh, I uh, we have something at Grace Center called Grace Center University. It's our continuing professional development for our staff. It's like once a month where our staff get together. And uh, last year, I think I was teaching uh, on feelings, and uh, on the week that I was teaching about uh, gladness, I was just looking through my notes, and I realized the night as I was preparing to go speak on gladness, I'd lost my wallet, which you know happens a fair amount. But in this particular occasion, it was really, really stressful. Yeah. Because you need your wallet for a lot. But what I needed my wallet for was uh, on Friday. So this was Monday night. Uh, this was Tuesday night. I remember this we- without you even having to prompt me. I really? know exactly what you're talking about. So Wednesday, I'm going to go speak on gladness. Yeah. Friday, AJ and I have our appointment with the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services yep. to see whether we'll be eligible to become United States citizens. And the first thing they require to even get in the building is your driver's license. That's, yes. that's what it says, like, please bring your driver's license. So on Tuesday night, I can't afford to look for my wallet because I've got to be present with preparing this so I, I can deliver something to our staff. And I'm aware that in my heart, I've got an opportunity to rage because I don't want to feel fear. Right. So right. I could just rage and like, ah, rah. you know, I'm, I'm really scared. I've got lots of toxic shame. Like, why can't I be organized enough? Why, you know, can't I find my wallet? Um, and I can feel the panic rising. And then I remember, wait, I've got other options. I can actually feel those feelings without raging at AJ and the kids and without, you know, forecasting just doom. I can just be with the Lord. I remember just quieting myself and being with the Lord going, Lord, I know you. Like, I know what you're like. I know that you're a good father. I know that you're planning my goodness. 
And I know that either you will find my wallet for me or you will solve it another way. And the peace and the gladness that came wasn't dependent on me finding my wallet. It was just based out of a confidence that I have that my father is going to turn all things for good for me. Yes. I've got a track record of it. Just this, yeah. this 40 plus years of knowing that God has got my back and is either going to restore the situation or redeem the situation. Mm -hmm. Either way, I'm going to come out smelling like roses. And that was this beautiful thing where I was like, okay, I know what the old Alan would do. I'm loving feeling glad in the unlikeliest of circumstances. Now, is your memory of that the same as my telling of that story? Yeah, that's, I mean, I just knew that that's what you were going to talk about because right. I remember you being like, I can't find my wallet. And then like, oh, I have to actually do this thing in, in the midst of, I can't find my wallet and it's kind of a big deal, you know? So yeah, that's- Yeah, yeah. I can't find my wallet, right? Life on life's terms, I can't find it. And I've got a good heavenly father. Yeah. And he's going to turn out now- what happened? I don't even remember how it resolved itself other than I found it. I can't even God remember. God gave it to me, but, but we it was, had it. Yeah, it, we had it. It wasn't a problem, but it was touch and go for a couple of days. So, babe, just, I was just thinking, talk about group this week because, mm. you know, I'm watching you come out of group and you, you've got puffy eyes. You've clearly been crying and look like you'd, you know, had quite the ordeal. Yeah. And you were like, oh, group was amazing. Yeah. So let me talk a little bit about group. Some of you know, I've been in, in group therapy for like two and a half years, I think, or maybe maybe longer. I, I, I'm useless with dates. And this week was uh, like a real gift for me. So, uh, you know, you keep confidence in group, but this, what I'm going to share is all about me and my experience. So I'm okay. But I remember that because we're doing group virtually because of COVID. So we're doing like group via video conferencing i come out of my office and i pad through to speak to aj and you're right i was worn out. i feel like i had just wrestled a bear wasn't even sure if i won my eyes were puffy because i've been crying for the better part of an hour yeah i i mean i it just took it out of me being in group and you said you know how was group and i don't know what you were expecting me to say but i was like oh babe i feel so glad like i had such a great group and you were like you're, <laughs> tell your what? face tell your face <laughs> tell your face honey <laughs> so what happened is you know, on 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 any given group it's like whoever needs time gets it and, and on this particular week it was my week to you know i just said hey guys i need some time and i just started sharing and asking the men in my group for some feedback and they were very brave and gave me feedback now their feedback about a characteristic in my life and about a trait in my life and about how they experienced me. Honestly, some of it was really hard to hear. It was re I was hurt hearing what they had to say. I was really sad. I was really frightened by some of this, what they shared. I was frightened about not knowing how to fix what they were sharing. I had like toxic shame that that meant I wasn't doing a good job in group or I, I'm not good enough. And, and, you know, so we just ran this huge roller coaster. But even after sitting with these men and they're giving me this brutal, real, honest feedback, which was hard to hear at times, I was left with this overwhelming sense of gladness because I got more of me from their feedback of me. Yes. Like, so, and that that's how it should be. Like, that's the outworking. Like, I felt all the other feelings and was left with glad, joy with sadness. You know, joy about my um, my shame, my healthy shame. Like, joy that... Actually, I I have wonderful gifts and I have glorious limitations and that's okay. Yeah. And we were focusing majorly on my limitations this week. And so it's hard to hear that you're limited, especially when we work, so, or especially when I work so hard to minimize my limitations. And they're just like, hey, your, your limitations are going to show up no matter how much work you do about it. And we appreciate, like, you get an A for effort, but, like, what if it's not <laughs> needed? Like, what if all that work for you to minimize your limitations actually just makes us all feel lonelier with you than if you just accepted you had limitations? I was like, I, I wasn't even sure that was an option. And so I leave this week with just this tremendous gladness about being known and about being understood and, and in the process, knowing these men more and understanding them. And and I, I think what I want to encourage you is if you're waiting for your life to change until you can feel glad, you've missed what gladness is about. You're, you're seeking happiness, to AJ's point, happenstance. Yeah. And you have the availability, you have the option of feeling glad right now without anything changing in your world, which is a gift from God. Yes. It just requires that you're willing to open up your heart and feel the other feelings. Yes. So good, babe. So scary. So scary.
So that's the gift of gladness. So if you choose to feel your feelings, then the gift is joy with sadness. Yep. And if you choose not to feel your feelings, then it's sensuality without heart. Yeah, that's your impairment. Yeah. This was supposed to be a nine part series on feelings. Like yes. when we started, we we're like, okay, this should be like nine parts. Easy. Like we'll do uh, uh, an introduction and then we'll do the eight feelings. That will be nine. Yes. It actually looks like it's going to be a 10 or 11 week series. Here's why. Next week, we're going to be talking about how you feel your feelings. So like we've we've covered the, the basics of all of the uh, eight feelings. We've done our introduction. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit about what is some of the work that you can do to feel your feelings and what do you do with them. Right. The week after, we're going to have the author of the book that we've been going through, Dr. I'm Chip Dodd. I'm so excited. He's going to be on the podcast. He's going to yeah. be answering your questions. If you've got questions you want to send in, send them to alanandaj.com slash ask, yep. and we'll ask those questions on behalf of us. Um but I do want to give you a warning. So for many of you who've been enjoying the podcast, you've been watching them on YouTube, you've been watching them with video, uh, in my opinion, it's the best way to enjoy them. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we're such expression full. We, how do you say it? We've got faces you want to look at. We're expressive. Right. <laughs> we have faces you want to look at. Look at this money maker right here. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> but our videos are going to be going away for the general public after we've done our feeling series because our videos are a perk of being a patron of this podcast. A patron is just a good looking listener who's decided that they want to become part of the community. They give from as little as a dollar an episode. And in doing so, not only do you get access to all the videos going forward, you also get access to our archive of video shows too. Yeah. And so I just want to give you fair warning. We made them available to everybody during the, uh, the COVID pandemic when we started backup podcasting but after we're finished with the series on feelings it's going to be audio only for the general public and if you want to become part of the patron community you'll have access to all the videos to learn how to become a patron go to alan and aj.com slash patron if you've been regular listeners of the podcast or if you've been following us for a while, you know that we're huge fans of something called the School of Supernatural Life. It was a school that we help found, help build, currently teach on. In fact, you are the head honcho, the, what are you? Yes, the head honcho. That's what it says on my badge. You are the director of the School director. of Supernatural Life. And I just heard that the school has extended the deadline for applications. Yes. Tell us about that. So because of COVID and because of all the uncertainty and everything that people have been feeling and experiencing, uh, we have wanted to extend the deadline. So we've extended it to July 1st. Um, So you'd have to apply by then. And yeah, we just extended it by two weeks just to give people a a bit of an extra window. Awesome. So if you've been thinking about doing the school, and by the time you listen to this, you thought the deadlines have closed, this could be a sign from the Lord that you're to do it because they've extended it for another two weeks. (laughs) There you go. Go to schoolofsupernaturallife.org to learn more about the school and uh, to have any questions you have answered. Yeah, there's lots of videos on there, testimony videos, and uh, it gives you all the information, who comes and speaks and all that kind of stuff. So you can check it out. But for now, thanks so much for being with us this week. We look forward to being with you again next week. Until then, stay safe. Feel your feelings. Enjoy life. See ya.